Hello, this video will explain how scripts to get external data for Portfolio Slicer works. When you download a Portfolio Slicer um, in a scripts folder, it came with two configuration files, one psconfig.txt, another psconfig demo. So for this purpose, we'll rename this original psconfig file to uh, psconfig user and psconfig.txt now has a information that is configured for demo uh, uh, data purposes. So going back, I will execute the script update psdata.bat and we'll explain what happens, what it is. You'll notice the script will start to create folders, quotes, quotes intraday, dividends, and correct exchange. So, so these so folders are created and some data is placed into these folders. Um, the script doesn't look very nice right now on the screen, but it's just now completed because it actually it, it gives you additional information about folders it created. The script automatically closes after 10 seconds. So I will execute it again. Uh, it's the output right now will be much more compact. So it just tells that it's requesting data from Yahoo Historical, exchange rates, Yahoo dividends, Yahoo intraday, Yahoo currency. So it's requesting all these dates. And that's it. So script script completed. So let's look what happens when these scripts run. So I have to put a disclaimer here. These scripts, uh, just some of these scripts were created by me. Many other scripts that deal with Yahoo, Google, Bank of Canada websites were created by another user, but they were created uh, so that I could easily then integrate into existing portfolio slicer script. So I just, uh, at the very end, I chose to just add them as well um, to, to, to scripts that I release uh, in version 2.0. Um, so they're not created by me and I had to investigate and find myself how, how the data was created. But this is what I found. When you run the scripts, you see that for each symbol, in the quotes folder, um, script created files. So there is a gspc.txt file which has a date, quote, and the symbol. So each symbol has a, uh, actually, because we enabled archiving in, in this file, each symbol has a two files. One file is uh, um, symbol and another one to underscore archive. Um, so underscore archive has a quotes. Uh, and actually that part I created myself because I saw the big performance improvement when, when you do like this. The archive has a quotes for older month um, where Portfolio Slice really needs just one quote for mo per, per month uh, to show you monthly uh, data or monthly reports. Um, so Portfolio Slicer shows you for last th month or last 30 days, it shows you daily data. And before that, there is no point to go to the such a detail level as day. So Portfolio Slicer can deal with or can perfectly work just by having one monthly uh, quote for each symbol. So archiving part, what it does, it moves some quotes from from this file into this file. And if you look at the sizes, your original um, quotes, because it's monthly quotes, if you look here, uh, file size is three kilobytes and your archive quote is 22 kilobytes. So splitting the files substantially reduces number of quotes you, you, you need to import, you need to work with. So it, it, it works faster. So what you see is um, these scripts create these files where uh, you have a uh, one quote per day and every time you execute the script again, first it will find the existing quote file, find the last date in, in this file, and it doesn't have to be ordered here in the file in a sequential order. It will still find the largest date here, in this case 2016 or 318, and will request quote just starting from this date. So this way it's actually done so it minimizes number of requests to Yahoo financial website so it saves bandwidth theoretically it, it would be much easier just to go and every time request all data but this way uh, it would be more load you know it take longer to request this data so what we do is simply we create a file for each uh, symbol with the quotes and if we already have it we don't request it anymore there is also another folder quotes intraday in this case is 
uh, empty. So this would contain just usually I think it's one file which has uh, all the data for all symbols for you just for the current date. So if Portfolio Slicer requested data and found data that is after this last date or, or 18 of, of March, it would it would request a temporary data and put it here. So this data is deleted every time you start the script. Uh, so it doesn't interfere with your historical quotes. So these are the historical quotes and these are intraday quotes. The dividends file, again, we requested here dividend information. So um, this all came back from Yahoo website. It has uh, uh, dividend payments for specific symbols. Um, and then we also have another uh, script uh, or another location where we have a currency exchange rate between currency one and two currency two. So again, it's a date, exchange rate value, and currency from currency two. So these files are created, and every time you execute this update psdata.bat file, it will request an update, um, just uh, update these, uh, these your local files. And then at the very end, when you run this, it will also it will create the the, the files that are required for portfolio slicer. So if we go to the C portfolio slicer, this was PS demo data. It's just executed a few minutes ago. So these files, what are really required for portfolio slicer, as you can see, they were actually here um, placed and ready to be picked up by portfolio slicer Excel workbook. Um, that's it. That's how it works. There is additional file, uh, the additional badge job, update PS data intraday. So what this badge job does, it just executes scripts to get intraday, intraday quotes and intraday exchange rates. So this will get intraday quotes. This will get intraday exchange rates from Yahoo. And then we'll again create the same uh, data files, the four data files, and then we check these files. That's how this script is run. So that's all you need to know about how these quotes run. Familiarize yourself with the quotes. So the first thing is that if you're not, you know, if the quotes are not coming through for you into the uh, portfolio slicer, the first thing you would check is you open the file here in the quotes folder and try to find the, the last available quote and see if it's coming through, uh, if the data is here or not. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.